in today's video, I want to reflect on the question of how much luck do you need in a coding interview? A quick Google search will render you with a lot of results on similar questions, such as like, can you pass a coding interview based on luck? or how much of a luck is needed to pass a coding interview or how much of a tech interview is luck and so many, many other <laughs> similar topics. So it's needless to say that there are a lot of people discussing this topic of the role of luck in a coding interview on platforms such as Reddit, Blind, Hacker News and many other mediums out there and in this video i want to address this question so i will focus on this following things like what is actually luck in a coding interview and what is my opinion of luck in a coding interview as a person who has been on the both sides of the interviewing process as an interviewee and as an interviewer and finally ways to build your luck for your coding interview. So starting with the very first one is what is really luck? And a simple definition uh, from the web is that luck is the things that happens to a person because of chance. So if we put this in different words, uh, our question is actually what are the chances that in a coding interview you'll get a question that you know how to answer or you know how to code um, and i think that's the million dollar question <laughs> in this video i would say we all know that coding interview it's an art and it's something that you need to prepare and everybody has to prepare there's no uh, that if you're entry level, you prepare, and if you're experienced and you code every day at work, you don't have to prepare. That is not the reality. And a lot of times, what you're being asked at the interview is not necessarily what you'll be doing at your day to day job as a programmer, but that's the reality. So, um, that being said, if you're an entry level coder or a senior software engineer, you have to prepare for a coding interview. And there are a large number of topics you have to prepare, but if I were just to name a few random ones, you need to prepare for data structures, uh, sorting, you need to prepare for heaps, uh, binary search, uh, graphs, um, binary <laughs> search, binary tree, if I already mentioned that, recursion, memoization, and many, many other ones. So let's say if we were to take a simplified scenario and say that out of 10 topics that you could be asked in a coding interview, you know only one of those 10, your chances or how lucky you are in that interview, it's kind of one out of 10, the probability that you will get a question on the topic that you know, it's one in 10, right? But let's take another case where you actually know seven out of 10 of all the possible topics that you can be asked. And in that case, your chances or your probability is seven out of 10. It's really high. So the more you know, the more you prepare, the luckier you get. You get the point, right? So I know this is an oversimplified scenario. It's a super simple. Before you jump in <laughs> into lead code and start cracking in those about 2000 um, coding challenges that they have, because we all know that the harder you work, the more you prepare, uh, the luckier you will get, right? So the luck favors the hard workers, right? That's the saying, I believe. I would say that like, what are the chances that you actually have time to solve all those 2000 questions? or what are the chances that you'll actually get one of those 2000 questions. So I think here you have to work smarter. Um, you don't have to just do those 2000 questions and that's it. Um, my recommendation of how can you build your luck 
or how can you prepare for a coding interview uh, to ensure or increase your chances of getting a question that you know and being prepared and being able to crack and rock that coding interview it are as follows. The very first one is learn programming and algorithm patterns. There are many resources out there, but the one that I found that works best for me was rocking uh, patterns of coding questions. That's an educative course that I found really, really well described with a lot of good explanation, visual explanation. So if you are like me, who is a visual learner and sees things and learns things faster when they see step by step how things are happening and how things are evolving, uh, this is the course for you. So everything that I'm mentioning today, it will be in the description below. So I swear by this course, I, I really used it a lot during the time when I was preparing for my interviews. The next thing that I recommend, so tip number two is actually after you learned and understood this programming patterns uh, is to practice. So there are a lot of good practices in the course itself, but what I actually recommend is to go outside of the course and solve about 10 to 15 other problems on, uh, on this from easy to, to hard type of complexity for those problems. Why I'm recommending this is that it will be your art of discovering what uh, of those patterns, which one of those patterns to apply into this particular challenges that you're getting somewhere else, not in the course. Because in the course, the challenges you get, it tells you what, which exactly pattern to apply. But out there in the world, nobody will tell you what kind of pattern you have to apply. So whatever, whatever you're using, lead code, um, hacker rank or triple bytes or algo expert or any other resource that you're using to prepare for interviews um, select random questions and try to think which of the 17 patterns that you learn from the educative io um, course uh, which one applies best and try to solve it that way the next tip is to practice your behavioral type of questions, communication, and how do you present yourself? It's not enough to prepare for tech interviews and just to fail because you are not able to present yourself as a person who will do great in the culture that the company has. You're not a person who communicates, who doesn't show signs of ownership or signs of dealing with ambiguity a person who wants to continue to learn and grow and so much. So there are many resources, but again, one of the resources that I recommend is on uh, Educative IO. It's rocking behavioral interview. Um, so feel free to check that out as well. The next one that I recommend is to actually learn and get familiar proficient with the tools that will be used for the interview. Make sure that you know them. So. It will suck if you're able to answer the question, you know how to solve them, you, you know how to present yourself in an interview, and for whatever reason, you're struggling with the tools that need to be done. So let's say you're in a system design interview and you have to use Google Drive IO, and you don't know the limitations of that or the functionality of that, and you're probably doing something harder than it should be and there might be an easier way of doing that. So help yourself increase your chances to do better and present yourself in a more favorable way by knowing the tools that you're using in the interview. The next tip is to enhance your video and audio presence during the interview. We live in a pandemic situation right now and most of the interviews are done virtually. So make sure that your video is actually showing your face, um, the audio is really good. You don't want somebody to doubt or not hear what you say or understand your thought process and stuff like that, or they see only your eyes and they don't really know what, where you're looking, are you cheating or not? So make sure that you actually presenting yourself in the best light and you increases your ch increasing your chances of doing really well in that interview. So the next tip that I have is that get used to being watched and judged. And how can you do that is by doing mock interviews. You do that 
either with your friends, colleagues, or uh, using prompt um, service type of things that there are many, many resources out there. So definitely I recommend you to practice getting judged and watched during interviews. Uh, that will help you tremendously. The next uh, tip that I have is actually to network and build your professional connections. It will help you a lot. Uh, it will help you with behavioral type of situations when you might be asked something, but also it will increase the chances that you might find and land interviews based on the connections that you build. And finally, the last but not the least important, I would say is as important as any of those is to have a self-care routine. You don't want to have an interview tomorrow at eight in the morning and you are preparing until, I don't know, five in the morning, sleep for two hours and then wake up super tired with red eyes and not able to concentrate and your brain is super slow and stuff like that. In that case, you definitely, definitely not presenting yourself and not increasing increasing your chances of winning or getting that interview passed. So your luck is not working in that case, right? If we're putting from that uh, angle. In conclusion, there's an element of luck in every situation, in every tech interview. Getting the right person that you can easily connect with, getting the right question that you can easily uh, know, hey, I know this pattern. I didn't do this problem, I don't know exactly how to solve it, but I know this pattern that if I apply it, I can easily do this. Hey, it's a two pointer type of problem. I'll have a sliding window type of pattern to solve this problem and that will solve you. You don't have to know that exact answer or exact problem. Uh, you don't have to solve it. You need just to know how to apply those patterns, like a blueprint, I would say. And the next, like getting the right mood, getting the right time, the right urgency. You don't know um, that uh, maybe they need a person right away. So your chances might be increasing. So there are multiple chances that play into you getting an, an interview passed or getting an offer. And some of these things cannot be controlled by you. Sadly, they're out of your control. You cannot control who is interviewing you, what mood they will be in, what kind of questions you will get and stuff like that. But what is in your control, what you can do is to build your luck by practicing, by doing and applying into practice the things that you learn. And the more you do that, the higher is your luck. I hope you found useful information here. I'm curious to think of, of what is the role of luck in an interview and did you have any chances that you didn't prepare and actually passed an interview just by sheer luck? <laughs> or do you know of anybody who did that or that happened to them? So um, please share this video with other people um, that are looking for a new opportunity, new job, trying to grow in their tech industry, trying to land their first job or moving up the car career. Oh my God, their career. Um, and yeah, make sure to like it, subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye bye.